This is the Coke Oven Department Hazardous Waste Training for Bethlehem Structural Products Corporation's Bethlehem PA facility. This training is required under law for any organization that generates, stores, or transports hazardous solid wastes. This training covers waste identification, health and environmental hazards, safety procedures, as well as labeling and spill prevention procedures. This training is required annually by law for anyone who handles a hazardous solid waste. This means you and anyone else who works in the coke oven department at Bethlehem Steel. By law, solid waste can be a solid, liquid, or gaseous and includes all spent or discarded materials. There are four types of solid wastes. First are municipal solid wastes, which come from homes, schools, stores, and industries, and includes general garbage and trash. Next are construction and demolition solid wastes, which come from work sites and dredging operations. Third are residual solid wastes, which come from industry. And last are hazardous solid wastes. Hazardous solid wastes are any solid waste that can harm human health or the environment. However, while all solid wastes are discarded materials, not all discarded materials are considered to be solid wastes. But what's the difference between them? Following processing the feedstock, you get your main product. In the coke ovens, after starting with coal, you get coke as your main product. You can also get other materials on the side. If a material can be directly reused as a product or a feedstock itself, it is called a co-product. In the coke ovens, this would include something like ammonia sulfate or cleaned coke oven gas. If a material can't be directly reused without first being recycled or reprocessed in some way, it becomes a solid waste. In the coke ovens, this would include tar decanter sludge or coke oven gas condensate among other things. If a material is a solid waste, it might be hazardous. But what is a hazardous waste? A hazardous waste is a solid waste that may endanger human health or the environment when improperly treated, stored, transported, or disposed. There are two types of hazardous waste, listed and characteristic. Listed hazardous wastes are solid waste considered hazardous because the EPA has decided that they potentially can harm human health or the environment. Characteristic hazardous wastes are solid wastes that exceed a set standard for any one of the following four qualities. They may be ignitable, meaning that they have a low flash point. They may be corrosive, meaning that they have a pH above 12.5 or below 2.0. Reactive, meaning that when mixed with water, the waste may produce dangerous sulfides or cyanides, or toxic meaning that it contains any of a series of poisonous chemicals or metals which could harm human health or the environment. Hazardous wastes are given waste codes to identify them. Listed wastes are assigned an individual waste code. Characteristic wastes are given a waste code depending upon which hazardous characteristic they have, whether they're corrosive, ignitable or flammable, or for which toxic chemical or metal they contain. For instance, if the hazardous component in a waste was ignitability, its waste code would be D001. If it was either corrosive or reactive, its waste code would be D002 or D003, respectively. 
Among the chemicals that can make a waste toxic are the metals lead and cadmium. If a waste contained a toxic level of the metal lead, its waste code would be D008. If it was cadmium, the waste code would be D006. Also, a hazardous characteristic waste may contain more than one of these. For instance, a waste may be ignitable and have the waste code D001, but also contain a toxic amount of lead, which would also give it the waste code D008. Likewise, it could be corrosive and contain cadmium, or ignitable and reactive at the same time. There are several hazardous wastes in the coke ovens that you may have to handle. Included in these are six listed hazardous wastes. The first is tartar canner sludge, which comes from the tartar canners. Its waste code is K087. Second, are processed residues from the recovery of coal tar. This includes tar sludge from the clean out of the transfer tank. Its waste code is K141. Next, are tar storage tank residues, which includes tar sludge from the tar storage tanks. Its waste code is K142. Fourth, are process residues from the recovery of light oil. This is wash oil circulation system sludges, including those from wash oil decanters and collection tanks. Their waste code is K143. Fourth, are wastewater sump residues from light oil refining. This includes sludge from the clean out of the intermediate oil and light oil separators. Its waste code is K144. And last, are residues from collecting naphthalene from coke byproducts. This includes clean out of bottoms from the final coolers and the mixer settler feed tank. Waste code for these wastes is K145. All of these K-wastes may contain chemicals at levels which could affect your health or the environment. In addition, some of these chemicals are polyaromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, some of which have been identified as carcinogenic. In the Coke ovens, several solid wastes have been tested and found to contain more than a safe level of benzene which is one of the toxic chemicals that gets tested for. This makes them a characteristic hazardous waste. These are called benzene containing materials. The waste code that identifies a material as containing a hazardous level of benzene is D018. These include coke oven gas condensate, flushing liquor from the A and 2A batteries, and flushing liquor from pump house drainage. There are several others, but these are just some of them. D018 characteristic wastes contain benzene at levels which could affect your health or the environment. Ask your supervisor if you handle any of the six K-listed wastes or benzene-containing materials in your position. It's important to ask because it's very difficult to tell them apart just by looking at them. Exposure pathways are the routes through which you can be harmed when handling a hazardous waste. They are inhalation, which comes from breathing of vapors or fumes, especially in an area with poor ventilation. Contact, which comes from direct contact between the waste with your skin, eyes, or mucous membranes, and ingestion, which comes from placing contaminated materials in your mouth. This may be food or a cigarette. There are potential short and long-term health effects if you're exposed to a hazardous waste. Short-term effects may include nausea, headache or dizziness, aggravation of respiratory conditions, irritation of the skin, 
or severe irritation of the eyes and mucous membranes. Long-term effects may include dermatitis, respiratory conditions, or blood disorders. Also, benzene and some polyaromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, like the chemical benzoanthracene, have been shown to cause cancer. These are present in the K-listed wastes. There's some simple steps you can take to protect yourself from these dangers. First, always wear the proper protective equipment, respirators, gloves, etc. Don't allow wastes to get on your skin or in your eyes. If you do, rinse them off immediately. Change clothing and shower after your shift. Don't let your clothes get soaked with a waste. It can soak through your skin. If your clothing gets soaked with a waste, remove it immediately and shower. Don't eat, drink, or smoke in the area of a hazardous waste. And most importantly, know the waste you're dealing with. To help protect your co-workers, make sure containers of waste are intact with no leaks or cracks. Store all containers of the waste away from process and transportation areas to avoid accidental spills. And make sure all waste containers have a completed hazardous waste label attached. Hazardous waste labeling is very important. This is a sample hazardous waste label from tar decanter sludge. Along the top is the company's name and address. In this case, Bethlehem Structural Products Corporation, Bethlehem PA, etc. Beneath that is the EPA DOT waste description. All hazardous wastes from the Coke ovens are labeled as environmentally hazardous substances. Beneath that are several things to fill out. First is the EPA ID number. This identifies Bethlehem Structural Products. Our ID number is PAD 990-824-161. To the right of that is the hazard class. This identifies a waste for transportation. The hazard class for any waste you're going to be handling in the Coke ovens is 9. Beneath the EPA ID number is the EPA hazardous waste number. This is the hazardous wastes waste code. As you recall, the waste code for tartacanner sludge is K087. If this was a drum of benzene containing materials, the hazardous waste number would be D018. To the right of that is a number that says either NA or UN. This means either North American or United Nations and is used to identify a waste when it's being transported. Tartacanner sludge has an NA number. It is 3077. If you handle any hazardous waste, ask your supervisor how to properly fill out its hazardous waste label because these things may change from time to time. Near the bottom is the accumulation date and the manifest number. The manifest number comes off the hazardous waste manifest. The accumulation date is the date that the hazardous waste was first stored in the container, not when it was filled up. From that day, the company has 90 days to get the waste off site. If containers of hazardous waste don't have the proper labels, or if the accumulation date has been passed, the government can impose fines and even bring criminal charges. If you're responsible for handling a hazardous waste, ask your supervisor how to properly fill out the label. If you see a container without a label, or with an incomplete label with something not filled out, or if you have any questions at all about how to fill out hazardous waste labels, ask your supervisor.
The final part of this training covers spills and releases of hazardous wastes. A release may be a spill onto the ground, into a waterway or sewer, or into the air if a material evaporates. Releases of hazardous wastes can have serious safety, health, and legal consequences, including lost workday injuries, permanent disability, environmental damage, criminal penalties, and fines of up to $25,000 per spill. To help prevent spills, know the waste you're dealing with. Make sure the container is the proper, shippable, DOT container. Check all drums and containers for leaks. Make sure all drums are in secondary containment. This means keeping them on concrete and away from sewers and storm drains. Keep all drums properly.